Hello, welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we're looking at another large, large block land vehicle, which is yet another research rover called the Lundy Research Rover, which is this lovely thing all the way over here. So this is a very white and blue land vehicle that features a spinning radar dish at the bank there made out of two hinges and a rotor. We put all the very new blocks from the late DLC pack and of course a new update to very good use. To get in and out of this thing, we've got an elevator system made out of piston right below the middle of the vehicle to get all the way up and all the way down. And we do have a way to go all the way up on top of the vehicle to be able to use as an observation post to survey the surrounding areas or to use as a simple docking pad for a very small ship. So pressing F10 and finding in the sport menu, the Lundy Research Rover is 745 large blocks using one hell of a lot of the DLC packs. We see up to here a very brief bit of information where it states it's a survival ready research rover that was made for an upcoming economy overhaul mod. It uses no scripts, it's survival ready, uses a lot of DLC packs, and it's also available on Mod.io. So giving this thing a thumbs up, we're going to move around towards the very front, have a quick look around the outside, then we'll go have a tour of the interior, I'll show you the elevator system, and while well, the journey takes to go all the way up inside it, and then we're going to drive around for a bit to see how it handles. From a testing while driving around on the grassy surface, it seems to behave very well the way the wheels have been set up, the way the main body has been set up, it seems to be a good enough distance from the ground, so if you do do a dodgy landing, you're not really going to be damaging anything important. But no, my character can bugger off just a little bit, there we go, and this is what we get for the very front of the Lundy Research Rover. So you see, all the way up to here, we've got a lovely curved glass section, which could be both your control center to drive this thing around, and your main laboratory to do your experiments with. We also got some transparent LCD screens telling you your horizon, your speed, and of course the weather. Moving down to here, we've got some floodlights to light up the surrounding areas. Surrounding all that, we then got some dusted steel blocks in both the grey, white, and then blue on the side of the wheels. Then moving all the way across onto the wheels, there's the wheel suspensions, there's the wheels being partially covered up by some armoured panels, and all the way around over here, we've got a small strip of hand skin in the black and white. As we move further along, we can see at the very top there some railings, which can be where you're going to be storing a small ship, or like I said earlier, using it as an observation post. There's small windows here inside at the main section, which is connected onto the front, where all your laboratory stuff is going to be sitting. Then moving further along here, we've got some more wheels. This time, two in the middle are joined together, until we come all the way over to this part. So up in the middle, we've got a wheel to appear inside as a small living quarters. They both have beds, but on one side you've got a kitchen table, the other side you've got another laboratory block. We'll see them more clearly when we go around on foot. But continuing along here, we see an O2 H2 generator built into the bank, partially covered up by a blue armoured panel, but then got a basic refinery, which is the same on the opposite side. Then around onto this section, blast edge blocks with some red neon tubes, just adding a small brake light. Come around towards the very back of this thing. There we are, we've got a connected docker up. Small stripper has skin once again in the black and white colouring. Then we'll move all the way up and look down, past that section, past that little air vent covered up by a beam log, but then come up to the centrepiece essentially of this vehicle. So this is your spinning radar dish, which does work as you expected, so there we are, there's the signal, just spinning around there. And then just hiding that and continuing all the way along, looking at it like so, and that's how it's been set up. So we've got a hinge angled onto a rotor, the rotor is spinning round, onto another hinge which has also been slightly angled, then we've got two arm panels on each side, just adding the little fins, with a little beacon on top, flashing in a red. Moving all the way up looking down, we've got solar panels for a bit of renewable power, Spinning all around a bit more, continuing all the way across, laser antenna, over to this section is a smaller walkway inside, this is your way to get on top of the vehicle, putting the camera like so, there we are, we've got a double door for an airlock, that's just come all the way across onto this section, we've got a bunch of glass, we've got some yellow lights and railings on both sides to make sure you don't accidentally fall off this thing. I'm not too sure if this is intended to be a docking pad or not, but like I said, it's probably more of an observation post, just to survey the surrounding areas. Moving all the way across, that's down into the front where we're going to be driving around. We've got two little control seats for your passenger still to control a few bits and pieces, like the elevator going up and down, the lights below the vehicle, the refineries, assemblers, O2 H2 generators, and all of that. Then past that leather section, there will be a singular helm to actually drive it around. But no, down to here, past these floor lights, this is what we get at the very bottom. We've got some decorative pipes just hidden in between these steel blocks. Then we come over to this part, which is going to be your elevator that goes up and down. Moving all the way up, there's your button panel, there's your fancy square piston. Now just go all the way up into this section, it takes a fair bit of time to come all the way up here. Then there's another doorway, another double door, go inside. Moving all the way back down. 
And across which way was it going? Blue would just go this way, get more death blow pipe blocks, they should blast the H block through the red neon tubes, and connect it at the very back. And with that, that's a very brief look around the outside of the Lundy Research Rover. That was bloody fantastic how speeds out. I do like the spinning radar dish at the back. That's generally my least like block in the game. Due to how cumbersome it is, due to how big it is and bulky it is, it's quite hard to actually fit it onto a ship, onto a vehicle, onto a base, while going for the traditional radar dish type look. Now what I'm going to do now is grab hold my character, and now it's time to come up that elevator and take a look on the inside. So walking past this, this is a scale compared to the engineers, so this thing is a bloody big rover, not the biggest one I've showcased on this channel, it's definitely been bigger. But now we're going to walk all up this lovely little catwalk, walk on top of it, then we're going to hit this button right here. But before we do that, we've got a button on this side, which coming through the lights below here, just make sure if it is a bit dark, well you can just turn it on, make it easier to spot. Anyway, pressing this button, here we go, all the way up. So like I said, it's going to take quite some time, so the engineer just standing around there. And yes, just looking around here. Nice bit of decoration to actually view as you're traveling all the way up. Pipe blocks, different types of blocks that are acting as the supports for the wheels. And then eventually we'll come up to this section where we've got windows on both sides. And then of course the doorway to go into the main ship. So opening up this doorway through here. Opening up this doorway. There is no program block on the head to actually control the doorways. If you want to have the doors close up automatically behind you, you will have to add on a auto door and airlock script, or a simple door script to do that. But if not, you're going to have to manually close them up. But yes, on the inside here, this is what we get on the main section of the vehicle. We're going to be driving around and, like I said, doing your experiments. Looking around the room, we've got planters, lab tables, a fantastic view all the way up and above you. On that side, more planters, the little control center desk, the button panels, the helm, the fly seats, little table. And well, just a lot of stuff going on. Ignoring this section through here, we've got a lab table right here. Onto this section, there's your place to actually clean up your experiments. Round over here, it's your console tables. There's your flight seat, which could be the same as the one on the opposite side. But like I said, it controls the piston, controls the lights below the vehicle, and of course your refineries and all of that. Onto this side, here we are, got our bump panels. So once again, bring up the HUD, got our assemblers on and off, you've got your basic refineries on and off, then you've got your O2 H2 generators on and off. So you don't have to get into the chair to control them. You simply just press the button and away you go. Now onto this side. Here's your little lab tables to actually conduct your experiments on. There's your microscope. There's your little thing to... I suppose that is a cutting board at the end of the day. And of course here's some little vials. And then here is a computer where you've got space engineers installed on it to go and play in your spare time. By the way, that's that for this room. All we've got to do now is go through one of these two doorways. We should go through this one then loop all the way around. So through this section, looking around, shower and toilet, continuing all the way through, we need to peer inside the elevator. Through this section, ignoring that bit, and coming into here, and this is what I spoke about earlier, but being a small little living quarter type section, where we've got a desk in the corner, got a little section right here to, well, store a few bits and pieces inside. Planter, round on the side, there's your bed blocks to actually go to sleep on. Looking up and around, and there we are. Quickly running through this section, into here, kitchen block, planter, desk, and then beds once again, so slightly different on both sides. But yes, I'm just presuming these are the living quarters. Anyway, into this main section, which is going to be back to these all the way up and above the vehicle. We've got some storage crates, storage barrels. In the back is your air vents, and of course your survival kit to respawn on to recharge itself. Looking towards the front, there's a logger store a few bits and pieces inside. And that's about it on this section. Moving up and around, past these armory lockers, all the way up to here, and here's our double door once again. At least onto the very top, we've got a lovely glass little docking pad for observation pose. So looking around here, we've got a good view of what's going on all the way around us. And that's about it on this section. So running all the way back through here, all the way down, all the way around. And then past this part, there's a programmable block coming inside. There we are, we've got nothing going on with this, but it does have Tetris playing on the screen. Anyway, there's a custom weapon controller, which could be for the radar dish at the back, or at least I'm presuming that's for the radar dish at the back. Now we can come past this, into the helm. I suppose before I go into the helm, what I could do is just walk down these steps. So yes, if you want to get a good view of what's going on in front of the vehicle, say you got stuck on something, say you got trapped on something, and you don't know what's going on, and you don't want to get out of the vehicle due to the fact there's spiders or wolves around, yes, you can come down into this section and take a little gander at what's going on. Anyway, all the way up in here, into the helm. Third person view, bring up the HUD. These are the controls we get. So they are identical to the two seats in front of us, to control the elevator up and down, control the lights below the vehicle, control the assemblers, control the basic refinery, control the O2H2 generator on and off, 
And then finally to control the batteries to auto or recharge. Onto tab number two, we've got nothing else. Checking all the other tabs. Got nothing else with them. So it's time for me to undo the parking brake and dry this thing around. So on this flat surface on the eyes, we're going to be very carefully spinning this thing around. And while that is the turning radius of this vehicle while holding forwards and holding right. Yes, we're going to come all the way up this grassy patch. So we'll make quite a difference to this vehicle. But as you can see, we are capping out about 43 meters per second, which is jolly good stuff and perfectly safe for this type of vehicle or for any vehicles in general. Now, having that radar dish spinning around at the bank there might make it a little bit wonky, but from my testing form before I started recording the video, it was perfectly fine. It didn't seem to interfere whatsoever, even when the vehicle was partially tipping over. In the first person view, this is what it looks like. Looking all the way around, it's quite hard to judge the front of the vehicle when we're going up a lip because we're going to slam into it. But no, when driving around at high speeds, it seems perfectly fine. And like I said at the very start, the way the wheels have been set up, the way the main body has been set up, it doesn't seem to pose any risk whatsoever unless you were driving extremely recklessly or you removed the speed limit. But anyway, we're getting trapped on some trees. We need to reverse this thing up, try to get it out of this position. Or what I might do is put the parking brake on and spawn it into a better, more flatter area. And so here I am. I've chosen a semi-flat area to drive this thing around on. I didn't want to go too flat. I didn't want to take it over to the desert. So I wanted to have a few lumps and bumps here. So when we start to go up to high speeds, you'll see any issues that will arise. So undoing the parking brake, driving around here, moving forwards in this direction. That should be a fairly good direction. So you can see all the lumps and bumps in the distance. And here we go. We're going to quite rapidly go up to our maximum speed. We can exceed the maximum speed when moving down. It should go up to about 60 meters per second before capping out when doing that. But as you can see here, driving around, we do get quite a lot of air time. But one thing you will notice, or at least you might notice, I can certainly feel it, is this thing does not have a gyroscope on there. So what happened here was I was unable to tip the vehicle backwards when I did the dodgy jump, and it simply blew up. But of course, that can be avoided by driving safely and actually paying attention to where you're going. But no, having a gyroscope on here would be a fantastic thing. To point, I'm going to do that right now. Just shoving it on top. I'm just going to put that right there in the dead center. I'm going to head on inside once again. But overall, it's a fantastic looking vehicle for a science vessel to go around an alien planet, do some, or pretend to do some experiments on stuff, for a little bit of role playing. But no, at the end of the day, having a gyroscope on here would be a fantastic thing to have to avoid what you just saw. But anyway, driving around one more time. Here we go. I can now actually control it with Q and E. So if we do a dotty jump, we should be perfectly fine at actually relining this thing to make sure we land down onto our wheels. To avoid while just going headfirst into the ground. But here we come all the way up. Slamming on the brakes. Comes to a stop very, very quickly. Turning around like on the ice fields. Here we come. We are moving up slightly. So this, so this should be a very good example of turning around while on the slope. But he's going to take quite some time to see this circle. But we're going to gain a lot of speed when going downwards. Then here we come all the way around once again. I'm not going to complete the circle, so it will take quite some time. But I saw there, I did take a little bit of damage. I'm not too sure what took damage there. Oh, it looks like the piss. Oh, the piss and underneath. I've got to retract it all the way back up when they start driving, so that's my mistake there. But no, as it stands overall, like I was saying, it's a fantastic vehicle to use in your world and could be a bit of fun to mess around with. And there we go. The gyroscope made a hell of a difference there. Relining the vehicle. Keep coming up once again. And there we are, just relining it. Make sure it doesn't take any unnecessary damage. Yes, as I was saying, it's a fantastic vehicle to use in your world. If you want to have a research vehicle to pretend to do some experiments, do a bit of role playing with, and all of that, the Blink Twist Kitchen Blow, if you do wish to download the player out yourself, I'd recommend you do. I'll be back with another video coming soon. Bye bye.